So what could be next in the course of this conflict? Joining us now to discuss is General Barry McCaffrey, a retired four-star U.S. Army general and an NBC News and MSNBC military analyst. General McCaffrey, welcome. Uh, good to have you back. I guess one can take some solace in the fact that all or virtually all of the missiles, projectiles, drones were taken care of by Israel and its partners. But the fact remains that more than 300 missiles and objects were fired from one country into Israel. That's a serious change and escalation. Yeah, no question. And, you know, there's been a lot of discussion on they telegraphed that it was uh, slow moving. Uh, they didn't really intend to cause casualties. That's utter nonsense. This was a massive attack from uh, one homeland to another. It's a, a complete change in the way the shadow war has been conducted. There were over 120 ballistic missiles fired. You know, that's a 12 minute flight time from Iran to hit targets. Uh, in Israel. They were after the F-35 aircraft fleet out in the uh, Negev Desert, and they were after military targets, include some in Jerusalem. Uh, so, look, the good news, you're right, is General Eric Carrillo, CENTCOM, was able to pull together a regional defensive response. The U.S. Navy uh, guided missile uh, destroyers and, and aircraft played a huge role, as did apparently the Jordanians and the Saudis. Uh, so it was a magnificent uh, defensive effort, so, but so Israel must maintain deterrence. So, General, does it speak more to the effectiveness of the defense or to the, I, I'm searching for the word, the in, not incompetence, but the, but the flaws in the, offen in the offensive mi mission? Well, I think their offense is very capable. Those ballistic missiles are very tough to hit. I think the Patriot missile uh, system is about the only thing that effectively uh, gets that. And by the way, Israel is a tiny country, so it's much easier than, for example, in Ukraine or in Iraq to defend mm -hmm. against it. Uh, but there's no question in my mind this was an attempt to deal a devastating blow the Israelis have demonstrated now to the region they're, they're sort of invulnerable. They've also are aware that Iran is terribly naked to an Israeli attack by F-35 stealth fighters. Uh, but right now, Israel has got to sort out how do we maintain deterrence? And it's obviously unacceptable to have a major attack uh, on the nation, whether it was stopped in, in progress or not. And in the meantime, it diverts attention away from what's happening in Gaza and some of the really serious criticism that has been aimed at Israel, including from the White House right now, about the war in Gaza. So, General, how do you see the next 24 to 72 hours playing out? Well, I'd sort of hope that the Israelis would find some way to back off, let some time pass, uh, try and respond but in a less uh, publicly uh, discernible manner. It doesn't look like they're going to do that. So I do believe that there's a strong feeling on both the Iranian part and the Israelis they don't want a major war. Hopefully, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the threat to Israel from the north, feels the same way. Uh, but you're quite correct. Gaza is still a festering sore. The uh, Israelis have lost the information war. They've caused catastrophic damage. Uh, they've simply got to bring an end to that conflict. Most of them, contests are, are out of Gaza now. They had 60,000 uh, IDF troops in there, four divisions. They're probably down to five or 10,000 now. So they're actually backing out. The question is, who's next when the fighting stops? Where's a pan-Arab peacekeeping force that will be in receivership of Gaza? None of this is, is on the table. 